Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today we're going to take a look at how to make an external antenna for our uh, little TEA 5767FM radio module. As you can see, the antenna this comes with is kind of limiting. So one, it plugs directly into it. And if you tried to use, you know, this is your standard headphone connector. If you tried to use an extension cord, that cord would start acting as an antenna and could complicate things. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're going to do is we're going to make one using a shielded cable so that the cable that we're using does not um, act as an antenna. So let me set this down. Now I am using, for mine, I had a bunch of this old, um, this is for your routers for your Wi-Fi. It's just some real thin coax cable. This works great. Now, as I said, you can't just take and plug in, you know, a headphone extension, or this case here, this is an old junk pair of headphones at the end was cut off, but you can use the wire. There's just, um, it's shielded just like the, the wire that I have here. It's shielded just the same. The only thing is you would have to remove the plug and I would recommend just getting one of these. Um, they're real cheap. They're like less than a dollar. And let me unscrew it. I'll show you. It's just a crimp on solder connector and this makes this project a lot simpler to do. So either one that you use, you know, if you're going to use the headphone cable, you only need one side of it. So you pull it apart to the length that you need, cut it off, yeah, and this is shielded. So whichever way you go, I'm going to show you on this cable because it's a little bit thicker, a little bigger, make it easier to see on the video. But either one that you choose to use will work. Any cable that's shielded, I mean, you can use some old TV coax if you wanted to. Just remember that's going to be a lot thicker than this and not as flexible. That's why I'm going with stuff that's a little more flexible. So basically, whatever you can scrounge up is probably going to work. Now we're also going to need an antenna. I've got a few different ones. And you, preferably one that you either can put a nut on or this one here you put a little bolt into. Either would work. And you're going to need one of these little crimp on eyelet connectors. Now if you get one, in my case it had plastic on it. We don't want that because we're going to solder this instead of crimp it. You could crimp it if you don't have the capability to solder. But that's, you're going to kind of really need to solder this and you're going to run into problems here. <coughs> Excuse me, allergies are getting me a little bit. So what you can do is just take a lighter. Just heat it up a little bit. It don't take much. Just be careful. It'll get a little warm. And you can pull that off. And you got your little eyelet connector that we can solder to. And... Um, we're going to need some heat shrink tubing, real inexpensive. You could substitute electrical tape, but if possible, use the heat shrink. It's just going to make things, once again, work a little bit better. Um, of course, for tools, a lighter or uh, some kind of heat source for shrinking the tubing. A heat gun would work also for taking the connector, the plastic piece off the eyelet connector. And for tools, you're just going to need Pliers is handy, and a wire cutter, and a wire stripper. Now, lots of these strippers will have a cutter on them. They're not very good. I like to use these little finer, better cutters. But All right, let's just get right down to it. I'm going to go ahead and set this out of the way and show you what you need to do to the coax. Then we'll come back to it, and I'll show you, because I'm not going to solder this on camera. A little difficult. I don't want the fumes getting up on the lens and stuff. But I will make this. You will understand how to do this by the time this video is over. So I'm going to set that out of the way. I'm going to take, I'm just going to cut a little piece of this off. We're just imagining, all right, I only need to go like five, six inches. So a cut piece of that. Now this one here, I probably put way longer than I needed. I was just experimenting with it, making sure it was going to work properly. All right, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take my wire stripper and put it in the corresponding slot. 
And just to make things easier, I'm going to try to take off around three quarters of an inch to an inch. And that's what we get right there. Uh, we're going to pull that back because the shielding the outside we don't want to be connected to anything otherwise if it's connected the cable like I said will then act like an antenna by being shielded it keeps it from working as an antenna so we're going to take and we're going to cut all those little pieces of wire off as close as we can that's looking pretty good then we're going to take our heat shrink. We don't need very much. It's like a quarter inch or so. We're going to put that on there. And we want just a little bit of it coming up above the strands. Because we want to make sure those don't touch anything. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. Heat it up. Shrink it on. Remember not to burn the cable then quickly. I'm going to press on it. Now it is warm, so be careful. I just want it to form down and fit good. Now what we have is there's no way for the shielding to connect the ground out on anything and act like an antenna. Now you'll do the same thing to the other side. Exact same thing. Then take our wire stripper again. And we want to strip that off. Somewhere around, not quite a quarter inch, maybe a little bit less from where the heat shrink ends. And um, on the other side, as you can see on mine, I went ahead and I left it longer. As you can see, it's, it was cut at about the same. same. I would just take a little off the end. Is what we're going to do now. This is the side that we're going to put in here. And as you can see, you put it down and you put the heat shrink in there so you can crimp that down. Then you feed, well, actually, it would help to feed the wire in first. Then take your soldering iron, stick it through the little hole, and then solder it on. Be careful not to warm this up too much. You don't want to melt through and make contact. Because on the antenna, it's using this very inside ring which is normally your ground or the, that, um, the outside, the shield of the cable. But for this kind of antenna, we have to use the center and the, the front two um, are connected to nothing. Absolutely, excuse me, absolutely nothing. Um, if you do it right, you want to be real careful. This one here, as you can see, it spins in there a little bit. It maybe got a little too hot. I'm going to take and put a spot of super glue in there so that this no longer will rotate because if it touches, it will make contact. And I don't think it would really affect the radio much, but it's just be, be safe. All right. So now that that end's done, for the other end, go ahead and unscrew that. As you can see, I did the same thing, but instead of stripping it way back, I just stripped a little bit off the front, just a real little bit. I put this in my little clamp, put some soldering flux in there, and I filled it with solder first. Then I heated, kept it heated up, slid the coax in there, and remove the heat and you're going to have to hold on to it for a moment a few moments because it'll take a lot longer for that solder to harden up than if you know you're just soldering on the wire because there is a lot of solder in there and then that end is done now you could go ahead and you know put some more shrink wrap you could have already had wrap shrink tubing excuse me you could have had a piece cut off and had it slid on there so when you're done you could have, you could slide it up Put it over this this particular cable here i am going to probably be shortening up to only about a foot and a half to a foot long for the radio project i'm putting together using this and another thing is this antenna will also work with those cell phone radios fm tuners some cell phones will have 
Um, some of your Bluetooth speakers will have it where um, it'll have a plug like this you can use for any antenna because they'll have an FM radio built into it. I tried it with my little Bluetooth speakers. This worked well with that as well. But uh, yeah, this is a great, great way to be able to, when you put your you know, radio that you're building in an enclosure, because I have an LCD screen, rotary encoder, all the bells and whistles to make this a nice radio. But um, <coughs> by having to connect the antenna directly to it, kind of limited things, made it difficult. And like I said, you cannot just go ahead and use a regular headphone extender where it's male on one side, female on the other. That will not work. Will not work. All right. I think we can go ahead and wrap this up. That's all there is to doing this. Well, then, of course, you know, stick your screw in there. Now, I'm going to be mounting this on the ins on the, the enclosure. I'm going to need to dig out a longer screw, actually bolt, excuse me, and I will probably put a small washer on each side to make a little better stability of the connect connection. And that's all there is to it. You could also try, if you get a long enough bolt on the outside, you could take and put another nut on if it's long enough just to hold it in place so that you can remove the antenna for transport. Another little suggestion. All right, with that, thanks for joining us here at the Z Hut today. Hope you found this information useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up. So I hope you have a great day and remember, have fun building.